What support did you feel you needed when you were first diagnosed? Thank you, Crystal, for having me and good afternoon, everybody. I did get a support, but it did come a bit late for me. Not that there was no one who offered it to me. My GP did introduce me to quite one or two organizations that I might not mention by name, but it took me time because I was not yet there to meet other people. At that time, I was still trying to get, get into grips with my condition. And at that time, getting support wasn't in, the, in one of my priorities. But I did uh, rev up myself six months later after I'd been given those, uh, those details. I did call one organization at that time and quite surprising that the person on the other side of the telephone was quite friendly because I already had built a defensive system within myself. You know how it is when you are in a new country, you are still trying to adjust to the, to the environment. You mm -hmm. have other duties as well. I had come mm -hmm. in as an international student. At that time, my priority was to get what it put me here done. And yeah. this status that came along the way, I wasn't yet ready for it. So what I did was just build up that resistance within me. Yeah. Being suspect, suspicious of every move from everybody. Yeah. Even yeah. Though when the doctor was, well, you talk, talk to me about issues, I will just go into that uh, defensive mode. So that is the kind of a uh, perspective in, in, in a feeling that I had when I picked up that phone to make my first call. And I, I was surprised that I got a friendly voice. So yeah. welcoming, so welcoming that I didn't think that thing existed. Yeah. So, and yeah, so needed yeah. that voice when all your guards had gone, gone up, basically. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So what do you want people in the HIV sector to know and understand about the experience of African women living with HIV? There is a lot that African women living with HIV go through that is still not heard or still not discussed. There are initiatives, yes, to look into immigrants, uh, late African women, or women as a whole. But what I have realized is that these beautiful initiatives that made me what I am from where I was played a very big role in my life. Mm -hmm. But as I am growing more used to my condition and accepting things that I did not accept initially. My mind is opening up to a, a whole new arena of things that I was blind to, but how that I wish someone who would do the journey after me would look into it or the policy makers that are, because this is an ever revolving uh, arena where we don't have to rely on on the past, on methods that worked in the past, yeah. because it's yeah. ever changing. For an African woman, yes, I benefited from initiatives that covered women as a whole, but not initiatives that looked specifically mm -hmm. on the African woman. Mm -hmm. Why I'm saying so is that most African women living in Australia are uh, integrating into a new society. But they are bringing with them cultural values from the countries of their own. That they haven't detached completely from yeah. that kind of, of life. It's still their life even though they are living in another land. So mm -hmm. this is the kind of a uh, situation that I find myself in. While I was integrating quite well to the Australian community, to the HIV response, using uh, initiatives that uh, were used across the board. 
I still felt that there were certain uh, sections of my story that I kept hidden. Mm. Not because I didn't want to speak about them, but because of my cultural background, I feared I might not be understood. Absolutely. For instance, if we take the, even this whole issue of disclosure, here in Australia, it's an individualistic thing. Anyone can, can disclose whenever they want without having to consult anybody. It's a different case with an African woman because of the strong communal background that we grew up in, that we were uh, exposed to. For me, when I thought of disclosure, it wasn't just a decision that I had to make myself and it was forgotten. I have to think of the community that raised me. So whenever I make, I, I decided to make a, 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 a move to make a, a, a disclosure, I had to think of my children. I had to think of my mother. I had to think of my neighbors. Mm -hmm. I had to think of my church. Mm -hmm. I had to think of everybody that made me exist while I was at home or still continue to be in Australia. Mm -hmm. So it's well and fine if you disclose, because disclosure in the African perspective becomes a, a, a communal property in this way. So it's well and fine when uh, the community rallies behind you and supports you, it's excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for most African women, and I included, it's the other way around. You, I disclose today Mm -hmm. In Australia, because there's legislation to cover me, to protect me. Mm -hmm. But that legislation doesn't cover people who are still, who are still attached to the home. You know how culture goes beyond geographical locations. It has no boundaries. I disclose here, I'm okay, but my children at home suffer. My mother at home suffers. So these are some of the areas that I want and um, I don't want uh, people reinventing the wheel as we say, but with it within the existing initiative, if the cultural aspect of the African women could be incorporated. Mm -hmm. and, and this means that you have to go to the woman instead of the top down kind of yeah. approach or policy. Yeah. Let's start off with the community a uh, engagement because the person involved is the best tailor of their story. So yeah. if they are able to create their own narratives around HIV, yeah. those are the yeah. narratives that will make them open up. Those are the narratives that they would want to leave as a legacy to people that come. Yes, what I can say in a nutshell is I benefited from the existing yes. but yes. If we were to go a step further, let's accommodate. Which we should, the, yes. The you culture. should have benefited, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. You have raised some and verbalized some absolutely um, vital, such pertinent points. You know, you should have benefited from those, but you're absolutely right. You've given that insight that it's not always a singular decision and that that's re very reflective of culture. You know, our Western culture can be very um, not connected to our families. Sometimes you can be not connected to your wider group, but that's not the, the same. So people can make more solo choices. So thank you so, so much for describing some of that and putting it to words.